I'm about to show you how to transform your steering wheel. Your wheel could go from looking like this, old and worn, to this. Fresh, premium, and new feeling with custom materials and colors. In this video, I'm going to take you through all the steps that I did from ordering my custom wheel cover to installing it and making it look great. Before we get into it though, let us know down below what vehicle you would love to restore your steering wheel in. To start out, where did I get my steering wheel cover? I used a rewrap kit from East Detailing. They're one of a few companies that make high quality, customizable wheel wrap kits with a range of colors and custom materials. For mine, I opted for black perforated material at the grips and a suede top and bottom. I also chose a white center stripe and white stitching. I have their site and a code so you could get a discount on your order linked down below. Now to show you how to actually install a steering wheel wrap. This could be done either on or off of your vehicle, but with this wheel, as you could see, I did it off of the car. The very first thing to do is prepare your wheel to be wrapped. If your wheel is off, I would highly recommend removing your airbag and trim for easier access to the areas that we'll be covering. If your wheel has any damage, like this deep scuff on my wheel, you'll want to go ahead and correct it before you wrap it so it doesn't show through and so you can't feel it after you put in all this hard work. I decided to go ahead and lightly sand down the steering wheel until that area was smooth. Then I went ahead and cleaned my wheel with some isopropyl alcohol. This removes grease, dirt, and other contaminants that would prevent the wrap from adhering properly. With this, once your wheel is all prepped, it is ready to be covered. The first thing I did was stretch the new cover over the wheel. This let me get a feel for how the thing handled and how it was going to fit. This may be a little bit tricky at first as it may be tight, but it actually needs to be this way. And that's what's going to allow this to come out so nice and clean and it's going to look very professional. Once I was able to get my cover all stretched on, I marked out the centers of the spokes and other important areas of the wheel against the wheel itself. This gave me a frame of reference for when I actually got started installing this cover onto the wheel. Once I was happy with these reference marks, I pulled the cover off again. And then I started applying the two-sided tape to the cover. This is what will hold the cover in place while stitching it up. It also prevents the cover from rotating and moving on the wheel during use. I used a moderate amount of tape along, but not over, the edges of the cover. There are lots of techniques that you could use for taping up a wheel, but this is what worked pretty well for me. Once your wheel is all taped up on the back, you could go ahead and stretch your cover back on, but don't pull off the backing on the tape just yet. Before doing that, I went ahead and made sure that this cover was in the exact position that I had marked out. Once I was happy with that, I then began sticking the tape onto the wheel. I started at the spokes of the wheel since this is the most critical position to get right and I positioned them all as best as I could. I did leave the rest of the tape unstuck because we're going to start stitching first and then move into doing the rest of the taping. And now to start the actual stitching process on this wheel. To get a strong first stitch, I went ahead and created a hole in the cover using a pin and the included needle. Then I put the thread through the needle and ran the thread through the backside with a large knot in it. This prevents the thread from pulling through and prevents all your hard work from coming undone as you use it. As for the thread length that you need to pick out, you could estimate about three times the length of the area that you're trying to stitch, but it's definitely better to start with too much thread than too little because it's really hard to add to it once you get going. Anyway, getting back into the stitching itself, I went ahead and looped back through the first few stitches just to strengthen it up and then it was time to really get stitching. There are several ways to do this, but I opted to go back and forth on every stitch, especially in the tight corners. By going every stitch, it gives me more strength and that thread will be able to hold more and it gets me a tighter wrap in areas like those corners. While I was stitching this thing up, I always tried to pull the cover by hand as much as I could, meaning manipulate it with my hands and not using the thread to close the gap. 
This prevents pulling stitches out and it makes for a much better looking and better fitting final product. When you're all set, the two sides of the cover should be barely touching each other, but they shouldn't really be overlapping. Once I was out of the tight area of the curve here, I started going every other stitch rather than every stitch. This makes for a more open stitch pattern that I think looks pretty cool. Also, by going every other stitch, you're doing half the stitching, and this will also save some time. It is less strong doing this, but in an area like this, just around a normal part of the steering wheel, it will still be plenty. Of course, this is up to you, depending on how you want your steering wheel to look and feel. During some of these longer sections, I was able to get a pretty decent rhythm going, and the stitching was a lot faster than going through the tight curves. I will note that the suede material acted slightly different than the perforated sections and it was a little bit harder to get it to stitch up quite as clean, but overall it still came out pretty nice and I was still pretty happy with it. When I got to the very end of this section, I could have finished off the section right there, but I wanted to make sure I was 100% happy with it. I went back through and tightened the stitches further using the needle to pull the stitching closer together. Like before, I was trying to pull the actual cover together by hand and just tighten the threads enough to hold it in place rather than use the threads to do the actual pulling. And once that section was done, I went ahead and taped off the end of the thread so it couldn't pull back through, but I didn't really finish this section. I'll show you how to do that towards the end of this video. To go ahead and do the other sections of the wheel, I did the same exact technique that I described earlier in this video. So I started by poking a hole in the cover, then I looped through the first few stitches several times, and then I started threading back and forth through those stitches on the cover. Again, this is the same exact technique and you wanna pull the cover together with your hand and then pull the stitches tight to hold it in place. I will say that this whole process is very time consuming and especially if it's your first steering wheel, it's gonna take you several hours to get this job done right. You could of course do it faster, but then you'll probably not end up with as nice of a finished product, so it's definitely worth taking your time. Anyway, after stitching back and forth several times for all the different sections, this wheel eventually was all threaded up. But the ends of the threads were still not tight and this wasn't really bound off how it needed to be. The method I used to finish off my sections was to thread back and forth through the last stitches on the section. And then I went ahead and made a knot again so it couldn't pull back out and I ended up taping my thread off to a section of the steering wheel. Now, you could also make holes in the cover and go back and forth so it's an extra tight area like that. That's actually what I would probably recommend, but this method is what I did for this wheel, and so far it seems pretty strong and like it's gonna hold up well. The final thing that I did to finish off this wheel is make some adjustments on how the cover was actually taped. Luckily, it is just tape, so you could lift it, rearrange it, and stick it back down, and that helped me get some wrinkles out of the wheel and some imperfections that I didn't want. I also added a little bit of tape in a few areas to help hold the cover in place where I wanted it. Then I went ahead and put my trim and my airbag back on, and this wheel was finished. And wow, what a difference. Again, if you'd like to do this to your wheel, I have a link down in the description where you could get these covers and I also have a discount code so you could save yourself some money. Also, don't forget to let me know down below what colors and materials you would choose for your wheel. Don't forget to like this video if you've enjoyed it, subscribe for more, and I hope you stick around for the next one. Take care.